Good evening. Uh, I'm Andy Gomez, and let me welcome you to this very special lecture this evening. Uh, on behalf of all of us, particularly here at the Institute for Cuban and Cuban American Studies, let me also extend a special invitation to anyone that's here for the first time, and hopefully you won't make it your last. Uh, we'd love to see you around. This past weekend, the Cuba Corps, along with the Liberty Institute, the National Association of Cuban American Educators, and the Institute, held a workshop to familiarize recently arrived Cubans on the concept of political freedom, market economics, individual rights, just to mention a few. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, we have witnessed many countries transform a, from a totalitarian state to a more open and particip participatory form of government. Tonight, we will hear from an expert on these issues and the experiences the Belarus has gone through as a country. Afterwards, we will have a panel of discussion to further examine these issues and the impact that these changes has had on Belarus and what lessons we can learn for a future of Cuba. Before I introduce our honored guest speaker, let me make some brief remarks to set the tone for tonight's program. And I would like, I invite you to think with me. When we talk about governments in transition, and we've been doing this particularly since the fall of the Soviet Union, the main focus has always been on restructuring the political and economic systems of each of these countries. Seldom do we talk about or take into consideration the social needs of the people that live for so long on the totalitarian regimes. The input that, that the impact that that change has, and I want to reemphasize the word change, not democracy, change. It's tough. It's difficult. For many people, it creates trauma, depending on generations. For others, it becomes a nostalgic dream, and many revert to the past because they knew how to behave within that particular box. In the case of Cuba, today about 9 million people out of 11.2 million people were born after 1959. This is what they've seen. <coughs> this is what they've been indoctrinated with. The ideology that many of these folks were brought up with, they do no longer believe. And for many young Cubans, they have started to contradict <laughs> that very ideology. And they're also influenced by the surrounding environments, whether political, whether economic, whether historical, whether social. And that in itself impacts how a human being behaves. At the same time, freedoms, and rights are great. But as one young Cuban asked me not too long ago, after he had arrived to our shores, I don't know what to do with freedom. Freedom to what? Many of us and many of our brothers and sisters on the island have been brought up with values and attitudes that will take time to transform. Tonight, we will hear from Dr. Munchak, Munchak on what Belarus has done, not just to change their economic system, but how the people have reacted to those changes. Let me introduce uh, and I, I mean, his resume is so impressive. And I had the opportunity this weekend, while everybody else was working, to read some of your writings. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Jaroslav Romanchuk uh, is no novice to this process. 
He's president of the Scientific Research Mises Center in Minsk, leading libertarian economist and political figure in the former Soviet Republic of Belarus. He ran for president of Belarus in 2010. He has written ex extensively and has, has been recognized for many of his achievements that he has had around the world in talking about the pursuit of freedom and the rights of the individuals have in an open and free society. Without further ado, please join me in, work, in welcoming our sincere friend, our new friend, our honored speaker, Dr. Romanchuk. <laughs> 